the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his, seal, in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers and they will throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like, shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let us pray. O oh God, help us to listen for your grace, your love, the life to which we are called. Amen. Friends in Christ, grace you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I like the suggestion that Jesus' Jesus's parables should be experienced. And further, as we experience them, we should probably expect to be surprised. Today's parable has more than enough surprise for us, doesn't it? One of the great insights of the Lutheran uh, tradition is the maxim that we are simultaneously saint and sinner. And every once in a while, I like to mention it in the Latin so you can know that I know three Latin words, simul, justus, et peccator. And if I could count, that's four. Now I'm really excited. So, well, a few years ago, Augsburg Fortress put out this book, the Lutheran Handbook. And it sort of has serious things and has kind of whimsical stuff as well. It has um, a, a few, four sections. Church stuff, pages 16 to um, 82. Everyday stuff, Bible stuff, and then Luther's small catechism. In the uh, everyday stuff section, there's a nice diagram and each of you will have to come up and look at it now. Okay, never mind. I'll just describe it. Uh, there's two pictures of a woman. And above it says, How to tell a sinner from a saint. And the pictures are exactly the same. It's impossible to tell a sinner from a saint. Because all people are fully both. The church is filled with them. As a baptized child of God, you are one of God's saints. You are forgiven and made perfect by God. At the same time, as a human being, you are one who is far from perfect, and it will be this way until your last days. 
It's always a little bit surprising that evil and good can exist within the same person. For some reason, we expect it to be all or nothing. And it's more than a little bit surprising that evil and good exist within the same organization or community or congregation. For some reason, we are inclined to divide people into the good and the bad. It is disconcerting to think that we aren't really experts at telling the difference between the good and the bad, that we can't really tell the saints from the sinners, the wheat and the weeds. Jesus' parable of the wheat and weeds speaks to this reality. Jesus says that the kingdom of God is like a field where weeds have been sown in amidst the wheat. Now, Jesus tells us the workers in the field are surprised and alarmed when they learn that the weeds are there. And so they naturally want to get rid of those weeds right away. Um, But the master gives a seemingly strange answer. So they must not remove the weeds right away. The weeds and wheat must grow together until the harvest. It is pretty much an instinct of ours to weed out what we think is evil. We've done that in the church quite often. It is common in our world for people to conceive of the Christian life as the life of being excellent weeders. And Jesus says no to our weeding instinct. Those seemingly wise plans might well do more harm than good. The weeding business, this parable suggests, is quite dangerous. Us Christians, sad to say, are often known for pointing fingers, placing blame, labeling others, and in general, acting like we are a collection of the very best. But this weeding instinct is wrong-headed. For one reason, it's often hard to tell the difference between the weeds and the wheat. In the parable, the weed that Jesus refers to is uh, darnel, D-A-R-N-E-L is the name of that plant. It's a type of grass that looks very much like wheat at first. Over well, Overzealous weeders could easily get the two mixed up and pull up wheat along with the weeds. But the real problem is that of tangled roots. In our world and in our lives, good and evil come mixed hopelessly together. We may wish it were not so, but it is. People and churches are a mixed bag bound together as one are the lofty and the lowly, the sublime and the ridiculous. We see glimpses of genuineness, and yet it can all be crowded by our human frailty. I quote often a sort of silly comment I heard from a lecturer one time. She referred to a friend of hers who was a feminist theologian who said that she had no problem with calling God Father in the Lord's Prayer. She said, I have no problem with the Father part of the Lord's Prayer. It's the our part that's hard for me, being lumped in with some of those other Christians whom I can't help but suspect she thought might well be weeds. Now she said that with a little bit of knowing that she's judging herself as she said it, huh? The beautiful love of God in and through us must find its way through other realities that we bring to the world, huh? Like gossip and power struggles and meanness and indifference. Amazingly, God's love can and does 
shine through us. But it is not always because of us. Sometimes sad to say God's love shines through, huh? In, in spite of us. Even within ourselves, the parable of the wheat and the weeds holds true. Each of us is this blend of good and bad, positive and negative gifts and liabilities, purity and selfishness, so much so we find it is impossible to weed the garden of our own hearts. We are unable to distinguish within ourselves what needs to say and what needs to go. Sometimes we may well know what needs to go and somehow we're unable to uproot it. Huh? God is a better judge than we are. I want to share with you some words in a sermon that a friend of mine preached years ago. He says, we can also grow impatient with God when our prayers to uproot some personal weed seem to go unanswered. More than once someone has asked me, why am I unable to overcome my rage against this person who has used and abused me even though I ask God for the grace to do so. Perhaps because God knows that at this time in your life, it is only with the help of rage that you can avoid being used and abused again. God will not uproot the wheat of your survival to get at the weed of your fury. Interesting, huh? Tangled roots among us and within us. This is the mysterious reality of the kingdom. We are at the same time saint and sinner, simul justus et peccator, justified by the grace of God, yet sinners as well. That explains a lot, not only about our world, but about our church and about your own spiritual life. Theologians will talk about the simul character of life, the tangled roots of good and evil. The kingdom grows within you, yet you are never free of weeds. You need God's grace as much today as you did on your first day, as much as you will on your last day. Jesus' parable surprises by inviting us to see that the impulse to root out the weeds, while sometimes appropriate in the terms of the parable, it is to be avoided, for it may well damage God's kingdom. And here's the amazing thing. It is, in fact, the friends of God, the servants of the Master, who are inclined to commit this disaster their good intentions would do more harm trying to remove the evil from our midst than the evil in our midst actually does. And here is where the enemy is so clever. Good people doing what seems right would accomplish evil's purpose. Evil gets the good to do its destructive and destroying work. The enemy sows the weeds, but the servant's response would have torn up the kingdom. To see this in action, we need look no further than the life of Jesus himself. huh? For even in telling a parable such as this, where he says to let it all grow and leave the weeding up to God, to those around him, it is Jesus who seems wrongheaded like a weed that needs to be removed that he would stop the impulse of our purification projects, that he would place himself between us and our spiritual house cleaning seems like the very thing that cuts us off from God's good actions. Good intentions, we are sure, must be built upon. Trying harder is the only way being right 
and pure is always our goal. And so rooting out the bad behaviors or the bad people or the bad doctrine always to us seems the only way. And so suddenly Jesus is the problem. Jesus is the one short-circuiting our religious success. Jesus is the weed in our garden and must be torn out. And that is exactly how humanity treated him. He came to his own, and his own received him not. There are issues. He forgave people's sins when one wasn't, couldn't be sure they were sorry enough. He healed on the Sabbath. He didn't show proper respect to religious traditions. He ate with tax collectors and sinners. Those are serious violations of the law. This weed must go. And so the good weeders, the religious folk like you and me, in the name of God and good, led the charge against Jesus. The very word of God came among us and we decided it must be exterminated. God came to us and we preferred our own religious projects. God came to us and we nailed him to a cross to save ourselves. But the enemy's deadly trick did not work. The Lord of the harvest had his own plan. The farmer gave himself to save his field. It was he who was uprooted and collected and burned on the cross for our sake, a life poured out to surprise and redeem us children, us children with our tangled roots. He died to save the ungodly, says Paul, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to him. And Jesus claims us as his own on the strength of God's own grace. And the Lord of the field raises a harvest of life from this one who was slain. Just wait, says the parable. The kingdom is growing even amidst the weeds. Have faith, says the parable, and trust the wisdom of this farmer. God knows what God is doing better than we who are sure up, uprooting the weeds is the way to go. Righteousness is called forth. Life is called from death, wheat from the weeds. And so you might want to be prepared because I think you'll be surprised at how it all turns out. Amen.